Okay, we're going to look some more at this function that we actually have looked at in a previous video. We did a limit problem about this function, but we're going to talk about some other ideas related to the same function. Um, so this function, uh, function of two variables, so we can think about the graph would be in three dimensions. We can talk about the domain of this function. So the domain would be all of R2, except anything that would make the denominator zero, which would be the origin. So for this one, the domain is all of R2, except the origin. Um, something else to talk about might be where this function is continuous. So this function uh, is continuous everywhere on its domain. Uh, so you have a theorem from Calc 1 about continuous rational functions, rational functions and where they are continuous. It's the rational function in two variables. So a rational function is continuous everywhere that its denominator is not zero. So uh, that would be everywhere except the origin. This function is continuous everywhere except the origin. And if we want to be a little bit more specific here, we might say on all of our two except the origin. Okay, so um, we might think about what's happening with this function at the origin. We actually did that in a previous video. Uh, so we'll just talk about a little refresher about that. So uh, even if you're not told to take a limit as x, y approaches the origin, that's the relevant point here because that's the only place where the function's doing anything a little strange. So I'm just going to go quickly through this. We did this before. You might look at a graph of this function to see if we think that this limit exists or not. Uh, but even if we didn't look at a graph, this problem is essentially screaming polar coordinates at you. Uh, you're approaching the origin. You've got the x squared plus y squared here. So polar coordinates is a good strategy that could help you show that this limit exists or perhaps does not exist, uh, depending on what happens after you make that change to polar coordinates. So. Uh, as instead of just letting x, y approach zero, we're going to let r approach zero. That would be from all directions. We're going to make the substitution here. I'm going to go ahead and simplify as I do that. So x is r cosine theta and y is r sine theta. So when I make that substitution, I'll get 5r cubed cosine squared theta sine theta. And x squared plus y squared is r squared. Again, we went through that in a little bit more detail in a previous video. Uh, some of the R's cancel, and so we're left with limit as R approaches 0 of 5R times cosine squared theta sine theta. And I grouped this as I did in that previous video. Uh, R is approaching 0. This part here approaches 0. And the other key component here is that this part stays bounded, stays finite. So when I have something approaching zero times something that stays finite, this limit will be zero. Okay, so what that means is that although this function is undefined at the origin, it's continuous everywhere except the origin, that when we get really close to the origin, those z values are approaching zero. We actually had looked at the graph of this function, and uh, it was a little bit of a strange graph, but as we got close to the origin, we said there's really a hole there at 0, 0, and 0 for the output. So one thing that you might or might not remember from Calculus 1, I find sometimes that students have forgotten this from Calculus 1. If so, you might go back and look at it for functions of one variable. Um, but one of the things that we might be interested in doing is forcing this function to be continuous at the origin. So this function is not continuous because it's not even defined at the origin. But what I'm going to do is define a new function. Maybe I'll call it g of xy, give it another name, where this new function is the same as the original function. I'm going to piecewise define this. Same as the original function everywhere except this place that's a problem in our domain here. So this function is going to be defined as 5x squared y 
over x squared plus y squared uh, everywhere except the origin. So we could say when x, y is not 0, 0. And then what I want to do here is essentially fill in the hole. So I talked about that the graph of this function would have a hole at the origin when x, y approaches 0, 0. Uh, z values approach 0, but they're not actually equal to 0. What I want to do with this new function here is fill in the hole. So I'm going to define that so that the output that goes right here in this blank is going to be the z value that everything's approaching as we get close to that point. So I want to take this value and I want to put that right there. And that fills in the hole when the input is 0, 0. So this is a piecewise defined multivariable function. So it's a little bit hard to look at here, but you should hopefully remember those from Calc 1. Uh, thinking about a function, it's defined by this equation when this condition is met, and then it's defined by this other equation when this condition is met. This kind of function, this new g function that I came up with here, is what's called a continuous extension of f. Continuous extension. So I took the function f of xy, which was not continuous everywhere. It was continuous nearly everywhere, not continuous everywhere. And I've used that function to make this new function that essentially patches the hole, where there was a hole in that original function. I've patched it by piecewise defining that function to have the correct output that I would like it to have from whatever my answer was from the limit here at that particular point. Not every piecewise defined multivariable function is a continuous extension. It would be important that the limit as xy approaches this point of this part is equal to the function output here. If this were some other number like 7 or 10 or negative 6 or 1 or 5, then it's not a continuous function. But there are several problems in our homework where they ask you to extend a function to be continuous at the origin or define a piecewise function that would make it continuous at the origin or define a continuous extension of the function. So we'll see functions like this really throughout the rest of this chapter. They're a little bit hard to look at at first, but uh, the key idea here is just being able to read it as a piecewise function and then understand in this example what I actually did by creating this function. I just filled in that little hole so that what I've got now is a continuous function. So this sometimes happens in uh, all kinds of applications where you have some kind of uh, formula that might be valid for most everything, but there's some kind of exceptional case that you need a slightly different kind of rule to define at that particular point, just to make sure everything is covered. There are lots of examples of formulas in statistics and mechanics and things like that that are defined for most values and then a slightly different definition uh, for other things. So we'll see these kinds of functions again. Make sure you do some homework problems about the continuous extension, or, or they might phrase that a little bit differently, extend the function to be continuous at a point. So make sure you get a good handle on that now. It feels kind of difficult when you first look at it. But if you work on making sure you understand that right now, it'll make some stuff that we do later in this chapter go a lot smoother for you.